All right. Well, here we are. It's it's Saturday night. It's six thirty. We're at Thirteenth um, and Hudson Street, right here in the Hoboken Historical Museum. And uh, I'm Rand Huffy. I am the collections manager, and uh, it's uh, it's great to be here. And really looking forward to trivia night tonight. Um, I am uh, here with my friends, uh, my friend and my wife. First, my friend Lois Delivio, and Lisa's Lisa's going to be helping out too. Hello. Hello. <laughs> there she is. Okay. So we are uh, we're happening, and I'm I'm just going to remind everybody that it, you know tonight is a trivia night. It's not a trivia contest. Um, it's just bragging rights. Uh, please get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen or write down your answers in the, thank you, Lois, um, in, you know, just to keep track of, of what uh, your answers. Um, and I'll be ans asking the questions, then going through them again with the answers. Uh, we're, you know, we are in the midst of a, uh, of a fundraising campaign. Uh, we're, we've uh, usually have some, um, uh, we have the, the Secret Garden Tour here at the museum every spring, and we did not have that this year. So we're kind of like see, we're seeing a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, we, we could use a little financial help just to help us get through from that, uh, that, that the fact that we didn't have that fundraising event. So if you can uh, join us, uh, let's see, where is where is that? I'm going to I'm going to go over into the uh, into the chat room and put a link to uh, to the uh, fantastic. Um, uh, fundraising world here, and um, just um, uh, just to let everybody know that uh, we also have a, a, a text text to give function, so that you can um, actually, uh, if you text, um, what what is it again, Lois? Um, text. Some kind of numbers they go down. No, well, they. Oh, oh, oh right. It's the. There's a word and then there's numbers. You got to text right. to the numbers and you got to text the right words to the number. It's it's spring. It's the spring goal. Goal. Spring goal. The spring goal, and you text the word spring goal to four four three two one, and you'll be able to to uh, you know uh, donate some money to to help us out. So the number I type to is four four three two one like that. Yep. All right, all right, that. Yes, you text. And then, I, and then I once I make that be the place where it goes to. Right. I put in spring goal, one word. Yep. And then whatever, and then it does that. Yep. And then that's it. You get a you get a you get a link, and you can opt to help us out with a little bit of uh, financial support. And um, so you know, why don't we? Uh, Start getting into it. We've got um, we've got three sections tonight. We're going to start out um, with the uh, with the fantastic. Um, oh, the, yeah. Uh, let me share my screen so you guys can see what what we're up to here. Uh, hang on. There's, uh, there's that, and then there's that, and there I am sharing my screen. Pretty. And there's the text spring goal at four four three one. I'm gonna play 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 our four four three two one. That that is our our NASA countdown guy. <laughs> that just seemed like the thing to do. So our 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 first section is Hoboken potpourri. Ooh. What what? <laughs> And you know, it's not. We're not playing Jeopardy here. So, like, you know, I, I whenever I think about Jeopardy and potpourri, because you know, Alex is always asking potpourri. You know, has a section called potpourri. Then there's a crack, right? Like, it's like, uh, what is it? Grandma's a pair of uh, dried leaves on grandma's dresser. Like a bowl of smelly wood chips. Right. Dusty. It used to smell nice. Now, yeah. 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 potpourri. So, all right, so our first question, and, and don't don't type your answers in the in the chat room now. But the first question is: During World War One, 1.7 million U.S. soldiers, known as Doughboys, left for Europe from the Hoboken piers. And they had a slogan in World War One, in Hoboken, 
what was their slogan? And, uh, you know, uh, we've got, um, let's see now, I've got to get over that screen. So there's, there's the memorial to the Doughboys, uh, or I think one of the memorials to the Doughboys at, uh, um, down at Pier A. Uh, it, it, it acknowledges um, them having so many of them left uh, from Hoboken. The, the piers were German owned piers and they were taken over by the government uh, because the Germans were the enemy. So go figure. Um, and uh, we, we actually had a huge, the huge uh, American expeditionary force left from, uh, from uh, Pier A, all the piers uh, to, for World War I. So, 7 million, that's it's, it's a lot. That's incredible. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's, uh, um, that's pretty, pretty amazing, actually. Um, so, yeah, let's, go, let's uh, head on to our other, our next question. Ah, yes. Hoboken High School, everybody. There it is. Uh, you know what? I have some notes that I wrote about, about all these things. Where are my notes? I need to read my notes. It's always helpful. To, if you've got notes, you might as well read them, right? So yeah. here we go. Let me bring my notes up. I do that. I do this. And then I do this. Bear with me, folks. So yes, Hoboken High School. So yeah, eighth between 8th and 9th and Clinton and Grand. It takes the whole block. Um, Pretty, pretty amazing um, uh, building uh, built in, uh, I believe, 1962. That is not in my notes because it's in the notes for the answer. <laughs> but, um, so the question about the high school is, where was the first high school? Obviously, 1962 was not the first high school. And guess what? You know, we're, this is like, not everybody knows this. This is just, you know, this is just fun you know, fun stuff, uh, if you have any idea where the high school may have been before uh, the 1962 high school, or perhaps there was a high school before that. Um, so we will, we will get to that. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you where all the high schools are. I know, so many high schools. <laughs> okay, so and, and they, they're talking about having another one. So that, that's that's the, the the high school, the world of high school in Hoboken. And I'm going to open up some other things. Uh, oh, no, please do not answer the questions in the comments. That's not why we're here. Um, anyhow, so. But after when we're done, then you can say, well, there were t there were so many questions. I got three of them right. Three yes. out of seven. That four is out of ten. Yep. Okay. So um, question number three in the Hoboken potpourri section. We've got um, uh, what author wrote about the murder of Mary Rogers in Elysian Fields in 1841 in the story, The Mystery of Marie Roger. So I'm looking for the name of the author. And uh, there was a, a story that this author wrote called The Mystery of Marie Roger. Uh, and it was based on this very sad uh, murder that took place where uh, she was found in the Elysian Fields in Hoboken. In a, uh, so uh, yeah, we're just uh, looking for who that author may have been or was. We know, we know who it was, but do you? That's the big question. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna, Let's head up. Oh, and, and look, there's a there's a illustration from the story. Ooh. Um, the, the, yeah, the author took it's the uh, pulling uh, the body out of the water. It's grizzly. It's grizzly, uh, and it was it was one of those. It was uh, it was very in the news, you know, uh, at the time, uh, all over the New, the New York City area. And what the author did was took the uh, story and um, transported it to France. So ah. that's why it's Marie Roger. Hence the, yes, Frenchification yeah. of Rogers. <laughs> yes, that's right. And um, one, of the, one of the other things that, that's fun about it is that like somebody, uh, fantastic uh, cartoonist, uh, Rick Geary actually did a, 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 a graphic novel about the mystery of Mary Rogers. So the actual mystery, he, ba he based the graphic novel on the true story, not the fictional, um, murder 
uh, story that 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 this author wrote. Um, so uh, we're but we are we're not looking for you know we're looking for the author, and so it should be uh, should be you know fun to see what where we come up with that. I, I <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to the answer on that one. Anyhow, <laughs> I, I know what it is, but it's just great. So all right, you know, we're going to move on. Um, here's another one. So <laughs> Hoboken is surrounded by Jersey City, Union City, we are. There is one road that linked Hoboken to Jersey City that opened in 1907. Now, Hoboken's been around for a long time, and all, it, all of its neighbors have too. So what road could possibly have been the one that opened only, you know, 113 years ago? Um, just uh, take a guess and see. You could just, just write down your answers, and uh, we will... Um, get back to the, you know, we'll go through the answers later. This is not a contest. It's just trivia night. And uh, we'll be going through, we'll be going um, through the answers after this. Because, uh, you know, we've got an hour. <laughs> we've got an uh, hour and a half <laughs> to go here. So <laughs> we're just trying to, trying to make it fun. Um, Did you say there's three sections? There are three sections. That's correct. Um, and, and the, we, we close up with the grand finale of the Washington Street game, which, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so in 1985, question number five, in 1985, Hoboken Mayor Tom Vizzetti was featured on the cover of the New York Daily News' Sunday magazine. What did the Daily News call him? Paul, Paul Nishampkin, you were on the board of the Hoboken Historical Museum. Of course you know all these answers. <laughs> it's good to see you, Paul. Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, right, so yeah, T Mayor Vizzetti, was, uh, he narrow narrowly defeated Capiello, Steve Capiello in 1985. He would walk around town with a broom uh, and, a, and a, an electric, electrified bullhorn uh, saying, I'm going to sweep the dirt out of City Hall. Uh, he wore, wore color, co very colorful clothing. He was really a, 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 a man of the people and not of the political machine. He owned the Madison at 14th and Washington and uh, would, uh, was very, was very uh, generous with food and, and sleeping. You know, if people needed a place to sleep, they could sleep in the Madison. Um, but he, he was a really great guy. I, I didn't know him very well. I just know that there were times I had only just moved to Hoboken in, in, in 1982. I moved there and there were times when, um, when uh, you could walk with uh, the mayor up Washington Street from City Hall to his home at 14th Street. And he would, he would, you know, he was very interested in talking to people. He was curious about things, but there was a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, snappy patter. Like he, <laughs> he also showed up. At, I remember him showing up at Maxwell's one night when, when probably on his way home and he just kind of walked in and we were all just hanging around drinking and he, he stopped by all the different tables and said hello to people. And uh, I remember, uh, Tim Daly made some great posters and T-shirts for him, and it was, uh, I think the line for those was, always a pleasure. That was something that, that Tom Gazzetti always said. Um, I remember him saying, it's people like you that make this town what it is today. Uh, take, take that for what it's worth. It was great. <laughs> um, so yes, what did, what did the New York Daily News Sunday Magazine call him? Question number five. All right, we're gonna move on. Oh, there he is. There's the cover. You're not seeing the bottom because that's where the answer is. <laughs> Very colorful. Yeah. Yes. All right, question number six. What useful packing material was developed at Stevens Institute in 1957? I'm not going to say it was developed. I'm going to back out of my own question here. I'm, I'm going to say that it was developed by a Stevens grad um, Alfred Fielding, 
class of 39 at Stevens, and he had a master's at 40, in 43. He created the material with his uh, somebody, a uh, Swiss inventor, Mark Chavanis, and it was in a machine shop. And uh, one of the uh, uses that they thought they were going to get uh, out, out of this material was um, arty, like arty, arty wallpaper for beatniks. So take that for what it's worth and see if you could come up with what. Uh, I'm changing my answer now as we speak. Oh, no. Did I give too much away? <laughs> I don't know. We won't, I won't know till you reveal the answer. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's, what, let's go move on to number seven. What global sporting event was launched from Hoboken in 1851? 1851. What was Hoboken like in 1851? Well, very. It was pretty much the Elysian Fields, uh, pre-Civil War stuff. So it, there was lots of grass and trees. Uh, the uh, you know the thing about Hoboken at that time was that the Stevens family had um, set up their ferries. So all you know, Manhattan was mostly below 14th Street. So there were ferries, I believe, from Barclay Street, perhaps even from Christopher Street, where you could come on over to Hoboken and get some fresh air and some, you know, hang out in some trees and walk along a nice path along the river instead of that dirty, messy, you know, uh, city that you lived in <laughs> below 14th Street. Um, so yeah, so uh, the Stevens, the Stevens uh, was very involved in this in this sporting event and. Um, that's, you know, it, it, it continues to this day. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll get to that. Where I'm, I'm, I'm wandering around my, my computer here for another moment. Please forgive me. Uh, but um, all right. So let's move on to question number eight. So we all, we all, in, in Hoboken, there is a park. It is called Church Square Park. And there are, there's, I know there's a fireman statue. There's another. There's another statue in Church Square Park, and it act, actually features a radio pioneer, somebody who was uh, quite uh, instrumental in the development of radio. This person tested his wireless telephone from a moving train using towers in Hoboken, Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Binghamton, New York. So, you know, he's, uh, I don't even have a date attached to that, but I'm sure it was really early on in the world of radio. So, uh, yeah, and, and he has a statue. So um, if you know your Hoboken statues, you're in on this one, that's for sure. John Rosette is here. Great to see you, John. Thanks for coming. Einstein's brain? What do you mean, Einstein's brain? <laughs> just just write your answers down, and and we'll be going over the 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 the, uh, the answers uh, afterwards. We're going to circle back after we get to number ten. Um, the answer. We, this is not a trivia contest. It is just a trivia night, where we're going to be uh, uh, just just having some fun, um, trying to have a few <laughs> have a few laughs. Are we laughing? I guess. Yeah, it's fun. Um, and we're going to um, we're going to have some uh, you know go through some some trivia. So let's move on to number nine. Number nine. Number oh, nine. Number nine. Number nine. <laughs> Turn what me on. What is that? What is that? That is a slide rule made by the Koifel and Esser company. You know, back, back before those calculators and, and computers. You, Lois, you didn't ever have to use a slide rule, did you? I did. I know I, I don't look old enough, but I did. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know my sister used a slide rule, but I, my, and she's five years older than I am. Yes. So, but but I, I, didn't, I never had to go near it because we had those, those, those calculators. Uh, one, by the time I got to fancy math classes. Uh, in high school, so Koifel and Esser was a was a, a, a company in Hoboken. They um, uh, 
manufactured lots of engineering equipment and uh, transits for surveying. And well, like like I have another item here. Like this, this is a transit for surveying. Fantastic stuff. They have a they they have a building on Fulton. There's a building on Fulton Street uh, in in New York City that is really beautiful. I, I should have included a photo of it here, but I didn't. Um, just because it is one one of those great old older. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of. Uh, I don't I don't even know what the style is. A lot of awesome stonework. Um, but uh, one of the other fun fun things about Koifel and Esser was uh, they had, they had uh, spiders. And the thing about the spiders was, any ideas what they used the spiders for, Lois? <laughs> <laughs> well, only because I read, uh, I read this beautiful clipping so quickly. Ah, okay. Yeah, Amazing. there it is, right down there. So, so the, the spiders would weave, their, the silk that they would weave got used um, in, in the crosshairs for, for not just surveying equipment, but also for Department of Defense contracting stuff. And uh, it was, uh, they, so they actually, in Hoboken, there was like a spider farm and people who were, you know, the spider, the spider lady and, and or ladies or whatever, you know, the spider people who were taking care of the spiders. Yes. And uh, apparently in 1915, the spiders went on strike. So they, that's a... <laughs> She coaxes them back. Yes, coaxes them. them. Coaxes That's, them back. <laughs> That's right. Coaxes them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. So the question is, here we go. Get ready. It's a mouthful. The first conversion of industrial space to residential residential use in the United States took place at the Koifel and Esser complex in Hoboken a practice known today as adaptive reuse. What is the name of the residential complex? So there are factories that were turned into living spaces. It was the Koifel and Esser factory. And we all now know it since like 1972, I believe, as something else. What is it? That is the question, number nine. And, and what's the spider situation there now? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't give it away, TV baby red. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and and let's let's go to the last question in potpourri. What famous candy? A favorite of Frank Sinatra's was manufactured in Hoboken. There were many candies made in Hoboken, but I'm picking one that is apparently claimed to be a favorite of Frank Sinatra, who is our next section, by the way, it's a little seg into the seg into the next section, but it was a one candy that was, that was made. That was a favorite of Saint Frank Sinatra's. We had a whole exhibit here at the museum called Sweets, that was all about all the all the sweet items that were that were made in Hoboken. But I want to know this one. All right. So we're gonna. I guess we're gonna move on. Oh, I wonder where where's we have a. All right. So we. Aha! We have a guest. We, it's let me uh, let me stop sharing. Bill, can you hear us? And can Will Bill, can we hear you? We can't. It's not happening. He's frozen. No. Bill? It's Bill Curran from the gift shop in our artist in residence. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I think Lisa has something to share. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll hold on with Bill for a while. Bill, you might be muted. Can you check your microphone? Lisa, is there, is there news? Have one of you heard? Um, there can we you go. Hear me? Oh, hang on a sec, Bill. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I just wanted to let you know that we received one donation from uh, someone by the name of Oda. And if I'm pronouncing the, the last name correctly, um, looks like Y Prior. Awesome. Thank you very much for your donation. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. We are we are involved in, in, a, in a, a, a campaign right now at the museum to raise money. Oh, 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 Scuba USA, you're killing me. Why don't don't give away the answers? Just write them down on a piece of paper. Don't do it in the chat <laughs> room. <laughs> so Bill Bill Curran, um, we, we'd like to welcome you to our to our trivia night. Um, Thank you so much. So do, uh, do you have uh, some trivia that you can talk you could now? Yeah, do you have some trivia you could share with us? I do. I, can you hear me okay? No, uh, there's a really strong lag. Can you hear me? Hang on a second. Okay, let's let's try it with Bill again. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Hi everybody. Can you hear me now? You know, Bill, I, I think you you're so for some reason it's just not connecting very well. I think I, I think we ought to move on, Bill. Oh, he's got the earbuds in. Okay. Maybe that'll help. No. No. Okay. Try it one more time. Hello, Bill. No. All right. I'm, I think I think we have to we have to move on from Bill. Um, I'm sorry, Bill. I, I wish it had worked out. I know it was fun. It was we had we had fun planned because that's what it's all about tonight. We're going to have some fun. Oh, Lois, what do you have? Oh well, I, I decided at the last minute I grabbed this out of our cupboard, and it. Uh, I am broadcasting from the upper level gallery, which has a rotating. <laughs> that generally last, what are they here, maybe a month or two, and then they rotate out. And Bill Curran had a beautiful exhibit here in 2016. So I've been using this mug for four years. And that's one of the things the museum does when they have exhibits up here is they will, you can get a mug as a takeaway. And that, of course, supports all of the good work that the museum does. And right now, the museum has a gorgeous exhibit, Hoboken, late 70s. Photos by Peter and Jack Mecca. So uh, they're all around. They're hard to see, of course. It's not optimized for seeing them. But this exhibit will be up a bit longer, and the museum is open again with some limited hours and some masking and all that good stuff. So I just thought it would be fun because I knew Bill was, you know, was tagged to have a little screen time tonight to uh, to share my beautiful mock from his beautiful huh. 2016. But but Bill, I think I think we're gonna move on because your connection isn't really isn't very good. So I I, I I thank you for trying, but it seems like you're just breaking up. How about now? Well all right, try it. Oh I'm so sorry. Try it. Can you hear me? Uh, no. Can you hear me? Now we can. Yeah. No. Oh well. Let's 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 move on. <laughs> I'm sorry. We should have tried it earlier. We didn't we didn't do enough testing. Oh. We should have tested it, but it's not it's gonna be it's gonna be too much. There it is. <laughs> Go to our gift shop and buy a book. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Bill. You look sharp. All right, thank you. <laughs> 
We'll see you later. Come come to the museum. Bill's here. For Thank you. Five minutes. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna get back to this. And I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna And Bill is a painter, but he's a docent here and he will help guide you through all the offerings and all of the wonderful ways to connect with the history. Yeah, Bill's a great Bill was Bill was gonna have some fun with uh, the Hobo one hundred Hobokens first. So because I asked him, I said, Bill, could you do something, maybe something from the gift shop? And he said, How about this book? And so we were gonna, we were, he was gonna feature that, but we we didn't do any testing because we didn't do any testing. So there we go. Um, we're gonna go back through the answers. That's right. We're gonna go back through the answers on this uh, on this great um, uh, the first ten items, um, and I will I will share my screen again. comes. Okay. Share the audio. Yeah. Okay. All right. So during World War One, 1.7 US soldiers known as Doughboys left for Europe. Oh. Um, from the Hoboken Pier. What was their slogan? The answer is no mouse. Mouse is not working. I can't find mouse. I think I got. I think I got this one right. You did. I think that's, I did. That's pretty cool. So yeah. So the, you know, there, there's the guys. Oh boys. There oh they are. Gosh. This is this is them coming back. We we have great pictures of them coming back. I, I wanted to put the picture in of them eating apple pie because I, we I love the fact that they're just eating apple pie, but. Uh, this is a, a stereogram uh, from the piers. You can see in the in the upper kind of upper right, you can see the Stevens Building, the EAS Building. Um, but uh, the answer is Heaven, Hell, or Hoboken, and it was um, it was something that was coined by the general, and it was basically, "Come on along, I'll have you in Heaven, Hell, or Hoboken by Christmas," and that became the slogan that you know go over to the to Europe and fight the fight. Where was the first high school in Hoboken? So there's our high school now. Fantastic. Here it is when it was built, a slide by Anita Heimbrach. Um, you can see that it was more green, had a more green marbled uh, thing going on. Now it's got this red. Um, ninth and Clinton shot, but uh, oh, I got to get my notes up because remember I had those darn notes in a second. Um, the Demarest School. Oh, there, yeah, that's a whole book. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so um, that is not the first high school, actually. The first high school. Hmm. Was at Sixth and Park. Oh. Also, also known as the Martha Institute. It was built in 1866 as a vocational wow. school. Oh. And it became, it moved to next to the library in 1897. And in 1897, it became Hoboken High School. This building was demolished in the late 1990s. And then the Hudson School built a building that looks a lot like the old. <laughs> but that is not the original building. They, they rebuilt it. So there it is. It's Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three, what author wrote about the murder of Mary Rogers in the Elysian Fields in 1841 in the story, The Mystery of Marie Roger? So I think I got this one right too. You did, yeah, I okay. Believe I you believe you did, so you know. Yes, it's Steve Buscemi. I'm sorry, it's Al <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, Poe, um, he, he was kind of the invent, he was pretty much the inventor of the detective story with Dupin and he, uh, uh, Marie Roger was his uh, second story. Oh, yeah. It was the purloined letter, and then there was Marie, Ro the mystery of Marie Roger, and um, mm -hmm. it was kind of the—I'd say it might be the first murder mystery, or the murder in the Rue, Rue, Rue Morgue was the first one. You know what? I'm I'm woefully inadequate on my Poe uh, knowledge, but uh, 
I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Marie Roger was, you know, his 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 murder mystery. Um, there he is. What road linking Hoboken to Jersey City opened in 1907? I'm on camera and talking. Yes. Does anyone have their camera? So, there it is. There's the new viaduct from West Hoboken to Hoboken. If you guess the 14th Street viaduct, you are wow. got it right. Here's what it looks like now. It's a weird Google Maps like 3D simulation. And there it is from, you know, from. Uh, Oh, hang on! We, you know, we we have a. I, I'm being I'm being recorded for posterity. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a 14th Street viaduct. Um, ha! It's num in question number five. Hoboken Mayor Tom Vizzetti was featured on the cover of the New York Daily News as Sunday Magazine. What did the Daily News call him? The wackiest ah. mayor in America. <laughs> The wackiest mayor. The wackiest mayor. So, yeah. And what useful packing material was developed at Stevens? And says, well, I kind of changed all that around, but you know, there was a Stevens grad who developed it. It might have been at Stevens Institute, but there's a there's a strong connection between Stevens and and uh, and 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 this product. Ah. It's, it's bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. Wow. I may, I found the sound. <laughs> we have the audio. I, I found the sound. Are you I'll eating it again? Yes. More bubble wrap, please. <laughs> so, number seven. What global sporting event was launched from Hoboken in 1851? Stevens family. You all know this boathouse that we've got in Maxwell Park. Yes, Actually, sir. Play park. Well, what was it? Why oh, does it look wow. that way? What's up with that gingerbread stuff? Well, they're trying to evoke the original Jersey Yacht Club, the New York Yacht Clubhouse. It was built by the Stevens family. That was where the New York Yacht Club began. And they had a ship called the America. And they won a race over around the, I think it was the Isle of Man or something like that. Isle of Wight, I believe. And uh, they took the cup and named it the America's Cup and then turned it into a, a regular yacht race. So that if you've got America's Cup uh, for that answer, then, you know, give yourself, a, I don't know, a pat on the back or something. Um, yeah, there it is, America's Cup. <laughs> what radio pioneer has a statue in Church Square Park? There is the statue. It, there's, there's, it, the statue actually has two pieces, but I'm just talking about the radio pioneer. Mm -hmm. And there he is. And that would be Guglielmo, Guglielmo, Guglielmo Marconi. And he was, he was a very important radio pioneer. And he's got a statue in Church Square Park. Marconi. 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 The, the Koifel and Esser uh, factory Marconi. turned into a residential complex you know there's a movie i'm just gonna just gonna i know we're, there's this movie can you see this this is like a whole movie that we have on our website that's all about real hoboken and i'm gonna stop it you should really go to our youtube channel and check that out if you're on our youtube channel now if you're watching um but uh, yeah, there's the Koifel and Esser building, and there is the Clock Tower Apartments. So that's that's what we're calling the K and E uh, complex these days. First use of uh, first adaptive reuse of industrial space into residential in the United States. What favorite candy? What famous candy was a favorite of Frank Sinatra's was manufactured in Hoboken? Lois? Oh, am I doing the big reveal? Oh. No, I've done it already, but you, you, have, you have something you can help us out with. <laughs> it's a Tootsie Roll. It's a Tootsie Roll. And here's, here's an ad 
uh, Tootsie greets you from its new home. And there's the factory. It was on uh, between Park and, and, and Willow. And uh, what is it? Uh, 15th and 16th. Um, if you see the building on the right there, that was uh, where the, the Macy's um, parade studio ended up. But back in, I guess, the, I think the 30s? I'm not exactly sure. Um, the Tootsies moved to Hoboken and began being manufactured here in town. So let's just go through it again quickly. There's all the answers. Um, or a potpourri, grandma's smelly dead rose petals, Hoboken. Fantastic. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's trivia night. Um, that is oh, section right. one. Oh my gosh! You know, we, we're, we're, how are we doing? Ooh, we're, we we gotta we gotta keep moving here. So. Um, We are sponsored by the Hoboken Historical Museum, and we are raising money for our spring goal. Goal! <laughs> Text. I know. I know. Four, four, three. Four, four, three, two, two <laughs> one. Lift off. Please help us out. We're, we're, we're um, you know, we're, we're for your support for our, our uh, spring goal. Um, so let's, let's, let's move on to section two. And it, you, when you donate that way, you don't have to log in or anything, right? No, you don't. You just you, you text 44321 and then you put in spring goal and then you, you go there and then you can make a donation. Yep. Okay. It's, it's pretty easy peasy. Yeah. So section two, Frank Sinatra. What name did Frank Sinatra's father use when he boxed in the Irish part of town? Oh. Oh. Number two. I'm not gonna get that one right. <laughs> what is Sinatra's best selling single? Might actually be his most well, maybe not his most well-known song, but one of the number top number one Frank Sinatra songs that everybody knows. Number three, what was Sinatra's favorite brand of bourbon? That's a fun one. Oh, there he is. He's, he's, he's got a glass of it in his hand. How many ice cubes did Sinatra like in his favorite drink? It's not a trick question because the answer is, is the, the way I feel the answer is actually kind of fun. So just bear with me. If you know, you know, kudos to you for knowing, but it's, it's a, yeah, he had a, he had a standard. What was Sinatra's favorite color? He had a favorite color. Do you know what it is? Orange. Bill. Don't give away the orange. Answer. Bill, that's okay. Like, don't, don't, don't give everybody a leg up. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to, to Bill, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> well, that's not my answer. No, oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> In 1945, Frank starred in an Academy Award winning short movie about equality for all Americans, regardless of race or religion. What was that movie's name? In 1945, he starred in a short movie about equality for all Americans, regardless of race or religion. What was his name? Here's a, here's a still of Frank in 1945 in that movie. Number seven, what actress gave Frank and his friends the name The Rat Pack? Who knew an actress gave them their, na that, their name? I didn't until I was researching this quiz. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the story. So, yeah. yeah. It certainly stuck. It did. It did. As, as uh, you know, the, the team there. And what did the Rat Pack call themselves? 
they did not call themselves the Rat Pack. It's not a trick question. <laughs> Number nine, what was the name of the record label that Frank started? He had a record label. I think it was 1960 that he, that he started it. Well, I don't think he started Columbia. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so. That will not be my answer. <laughs> <laughs> and number 10, what phrase would Sinatra add his recording of the song New York, New York. So there, the song was was from the movie New York, New York, right, Lois? Um, Correct. It had uh, Liza Minnelli, Robert De Niro, um, directed by Scorsese, and uh, Sinatra recorded the, the title song, written by Candor and Ebb, also of of Cabaret and other. You got any, any of their other works there, Lois, in your, in your head? I can't pull it out right now. That's all right, that's fine. <laughs> but, yep. So, uh, yeah, so they, uh, he, he added something to the song that was not something that the songwriters had. So, you know, if you hear Liza Minnelli, she probably, she probably sang it correctly. Um, but in, in not a hit recording, it's something different. There's some charming extra noise. On I know. I don't know okay. where that's coming from. Yeah. Right. All right. So let's go back and, and, and go through the uh, through the answer. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to wet my whistle here for a moment. OK, what name did Sinatra's father use when he boxed in the Irish bar town? Well, he had a he had a bar at 333 Jefferson. Um, and the name that he used was Marty O'Brien. And you know, there was a bar there. There was a bar at First in Bloomfield called Marty O'Brien's. <clears throat> I would say in, 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 in reference to Sinatra's father. What is Sinatra's best selling song? Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Number one. You know, this go back my way. You know what I heard that it's apparently very it's it's an insult to sing my way, I think in Filipino karaoke. People get very upset that you're being so uh, you know, so strong for your for your speaking so strongly for yourself that they, that it that it ends up wow. causing fights in karaoke <laughs> in the Philippines. Um what was Sinatra's favorite brand of bourbon? There's that shot that we showed before of him with the glass. And there he is pouring it with Sammy and Dean. It's Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just, just uh, how many ice cubes does Sinatra feel like in his drink? Well, let, let's play this Jack Daniels commercial. <laughs> We can, we, there's actually, it actually tells you right out in this thing. So hopefully, hopefully you, you're seeing this. Frank Sinatra was a man. No, he was the man. And he loved Jack. No, that's Jackie. Jack, as in Daniels. On stage every night. Three rocks, two fingers, and a splash of water. He's even buried with a bottle of it. Frank. All right. Well, if you if you listen, there he said it was two fingers, three three cubes, and, and um, I did forget what the other one. Three rocks, two fingers, and a three splash. Rocks. And a splash. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> so there, there it is. How many ice cubes? Um, what was Sinatra's favorite color? I actually tried to make this a trick question, but it all depends on what the monitor and screen you're using because this is a very pale orange. Lois, do you have anything to say about orange? I don't know. I'm wearing it tonight. For there you reason. are. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Frank. 
1945, Frank Sinatra starred in an Academy Award winning short movie about equality for all Americans, regardless of race or religion. What was its name? It was The House I Live In. I'm going to jump around here. Not a recording, take three. It plays real, well enough for you with my jumping around. But, you know. There was a Jap battleship. That's not the only see there. Hang on a minute. And one of our planes spotted it. You know what a time a battleship is? They make suckers out of you. Well, uh, gotta go to work. All right, Frank. What do you work? I think. Oh, you're a kid. Come here. Now you all stand here, and no hissing allowed. What is America to me? I'm going to move on. That was really nice. <laughs> okay. What actress gave Frank and his friends the name the Rat Pack? There she is. Oh. That was the line call. Uh, late at night after uh, after the after party with everybody strewn about in various stages of sobriety. I'm reading my notes. Lauren Duvall said they look like a pack of rats. Um, and the name stuck. And uh, actually, un until Bogart uh, died in 1957, he was kind of considered the, the, the lead rat of the you know, pack. But then when he died, um, Sinatra kind of became the leader. So, you know. <laughs> Bogart's looking, looking. Uh, you know, he's he's questioning what's going on, but Frank is ready. You Frank know, he's, yeah. he's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed in that one. <laughs> Can I make an observation? No, yeah. no, move on, move on, move on. No, no, no. Go ahead. Well, I know. I mean, I I'm looking at their. Uh, they they choose different kind of bow ties. I don't remember which one's more formal, or is that a choice? Yeah, I don't know yeah. anything about tuxedos. Yeah. I just enjoy seeing. That. And frankly, actually, Lisa's necklace looks exactly like Lauren Bacall's necklace that's fading into her drink. It's all one big glob of glitter <laughs> for me. Yeah. And it just so happens that you're wearing, I don't know, it's just amusing to me that. All right. Your name okay. is this? Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> so the question then is what did the rat pack call themselves? They call themselves the summit. I don't know. But huh. they, they didn't call themselves the Rat Pack. What was the name of the record label Frank started? Lois, can you help me out with this one? Um, it would be Reprise. Reprise Records. Reprise Records. We, we had to discuss that pronunciation before, before the... Uh, for the show tonight, <laughs> to make sure, <laughs> and, and Lois got the got the real the real details. It seems so. to be reprise, but reprise is more common when it's a verb, right? Right. For this usage, uh, and that's how he pronounced it apparently. So. Okay, got it. Here's the big one. What number ten? What phrase did Sinatra add to his recording of the song "New York, New York"? All right. It's audio clip time. I want to wake up in a city that never sleeps and find I'm a number one top of the list. King of the list. So that would be a number one. <laughs> no, it's funny because I went to the uh, I went to YouTube to try to um, find a a video of of Frank uh, singing it with that song with that line in there, and I was not able to find that. So I have the suspicion, you know, the the songwriters actually uh, expressed in 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 the media that they they actually didn't like a number one um <clears throat> and uh it's just funny that that frank had it in there twice but then on on the in all the videos on youtube he does not use the phrase so i think that you know it uh he, he he was. It sounds like he was acknowledging that the songwriters did not, you know, like him um, 
putting that in there. It was pretty cool. So, and that, that would be it for our section two Sinatra. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that was, that was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we will uh, we'll move on to, oh, well, let's go through the questions. Marty O'Brien. Oh, Marty O'Brien, by the way, you know, Sinatra also had, an, had a, a, a nickname called Slaxy O'Brien because he was M Marty O'Brien's son and he had a lot of pairs of slacks. Just what, you know, what, what <laughs> we just kind of get a kick out of that, that nickname. Um, number three, Jack Daniels. Four, three, Ice Cubes. Favorite color is our, Bill. Bill, his favorite color? Orange. Thank you. Orange. <laughs> <laughs> the, the short, the Academy Oscar winning movie, the short movie, House, House I Live In. Lauren Bacall gave them the name The Rat Pack. They called themselves The Summit. Reprise Records. And A number one added added to the song um, by Frank at, during the recording. I think it's Tina Sinatra's birthday today. So happy birthday, Tina. Um, I don't know. I think I saw that. On, I think I saw that on Twitter this morning. Um, <laughs> I thought like, oh, I'm doing Sinatra trivia. So I might not, not harm, not, not a bad thing to mention that. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we're, oh that, there's trivia night here we are we are in trivia night I'm Rand Hoppy I'm here with Lois Delivio um, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump out of the screen share here for, just for a moment so because just because like why you know am I am I doing, am I doing it there I am okay so right so I've got my my earbuds on and. <laughs> Just uh, you know, tuxedo like like gear, and uh, <clears throat> it's really really fun to be here. I hope you guys are having fun. Um, we are. Uh, there, there's somebody. Is there somebody else in the in the museum here that, that we haven't like acknowledged? I, could, could there be? Is, is Bob still around? No. Oh, he took off. Oh, darn it. Okay. Because um, it's break time. Um, so all right. Please. Uh, so we are going to uh, move on to um, the Washington Street game portion. But first, oh, man, let me get back to this and get back to this. Share audio, please. Do that. Do that. And if you if you text, oh man, come on! Spring goal <laughs> to four, four, three, two, one. We would really appreciate it. We're 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 trying to raise fifty thousand dollars this year. I think we're up to twenty two four, and uh, any any help you can give us to cover uh, the loss of not having a secret garden tour this year would really be a big help. Um, we you know our donations are tax deductible. We are here in uh, <clears throat> Northeast Hoboken. We have uh, regular exhibits. We we. Um, host artists uh, exhibits upstairs pretty much on a monthly or four or five, six weekly basis. Um, open six days a week. Bill Curran is with is here five days a week. Um, I am Rand Hoppy, the collections manager. I'm here with Lois Delivio. And my lovely bride, uh, Lisa Hoppy, is, is also um, here as well. And uh, Bill Curran is attending the Zoom meeting. But uh, <clears throat> I know you guys are all out on YouTube. Don't write your answers in the chat room, please. Thank you. Um, John Oak Tools says that uh, Tina Sinatra is 72 today in the, in the, in the chat. So that was, that was cool. Um, so here we go. We're going to head on. Am I, and I am sharing the screen. OK. So let's go to the Washington Street game, because everybody plays it. 
you know you're walking up and down or dri driving, uh, driving. It's on the bus up and down Washington Street, and you're always playing the Washington Street game. So let's get started. Here we are. What are we looking at? I don't know. I don't know whether that was the right thing to put there. Oh, man, something went wrong. Hang on. Hello? Hang on. That was... Uh, something went wrong with my slides. Let me just look at my slides for a second. Okay. All right. I know. I know what I'm doing now. Okay. So here, here is the corner of uh, of Seventh and Washington. There it is. Years ago, uh, <laughs> what well-known sandwich shop had its first ever location on the southeast corner of Seventh and Washington? Question number one in the Washington Street game. I hope that the answer will come up next. Ah, no, here we are on 6th and the southeast corner of 6th and Washington, where Warby Parker is now. I actually am kind of, I, I admit it, I like the eyeglass uh, bike stand. What can I tell you? I, do, I, I don't know how much I like the, the, the sign on the, on the, you know, the paint on the wall on the side, but I really do like the eyeglasses. Um, so Warby Parker, 6th and Washington. What, no, question number two in section three is what was there before Warby Parker? What was at 6th and Washington before Warby Parker? And then question number three is what was there for many years? I, I, it was, I don't think it was there directly before the thing that was there before it was on before Warby Parker. But there was something that there was an there was an establishment that was at that corner for a really long time. <clears throat> what was it? Ah, yes, the beautiful Soul Cycle, part of the Uptown Bank, Hoboken Trust Company Bank Building in the northwest corner of Fourteenth and Wash. What was there before that? Obviously, not a bank because I I, I wouldn't have given it away. <laughs> Okay, question number five. Uh, Robongi. 520 Washington. It was the home of many other restaurants before its current in our incarnation as Robongi. Can you name the Mexican place? There was a Mexican place there. I know because I ate there. <laughs> I think I ate there, but doesn't mean I know the answer. Aha, uh -huh, see? <laughs> Well, what, about the Mexican place, it was interesting that they opened up in Hoboken because I was using, I was eating there in Manhattan as well. It was a chain, a small chain. Oh, that's a hint. Yes. And then the hot dog, there was a hot dog place. Number six was a hot dog place at 520 Washington. What was its name? No hints. How's everybody in the chat room? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it looks good. Ah, uh, the Mad Hatter. What is the number? 221, I think. We'll get next slide. I'll show the Mad Hatter. There it is, Washington Street, between second and third. What was, yeah, 221 Wash. What was in the Mad, what was at the location of the Mad Hatter before it was the Mad Hatter? Pretty recent. I just pulled it off the back of my brain. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Victory is mine for this one, <laughs> for number seven. Uh, this is the one, that, this is the, 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 the bug out. What national fast food chain had a branch or a franchise there a long time ago? Now, I moved here in 82, and I think that's what was there in 82. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, there was, there was something in, in, in that location uh, back in the 80s that was a national fast food chain. Number eight. The Washington Street game. Oh, look, it's the BCB Bank. 11th and Wash, Northeast Corner. What was it? What was at the BCB Bank branch location before it was a BCB Bank branch? Uh, 
think this is all I have for the Washington Street game. Question. I'm cheating. I got the answer from Lisa. Oh, man. <laughs> so here's Mamoon's falafels. They are, they are at uh, third and wash. Where was Mamoon's before they moved to third and wash? We don't have to be super specific and exact. No, we don't need an address. Okay. You know, again, it's not a contest. So just get it, you know, get a general idea. Be, be, you know, be like a Hobokener and say, you know, yeah, it was uh, six <laughs> and four. So, you know. I uh, hope two. Oh, yeah. Something like that. So let's go back and we're going to, um, we'll go through the answer. Five so hope two wash. All right. Wait a minute. Okay. What well-known sandwich shop has its first ever location on the southeast corner of 7th and Wash? Hang on a second. Where are my notes? I love my notes. Plenty. That's right. I know it was Blimpy. It's good. There's a nice picture of the Blimpy base right there. Oh. <laughs> And we've got some mummers <laughs> in, a, in a Halloween parade, <laughs> which, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I think we narrowed down the, 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 the date on this photo. I need, I need a Heimbrook, Heimbrook slide. Um, so the, you know, it, was found, it was started in 1964. The guys who started it, um, they, I think they might have been inspired by something, they, a sandwich or a hero or a sub that they experienced down at the shore where they, uh, somebody put lettuce and tomato on a cold cut sandwich. And they were like, what? Salad on a sandwich? Wait a minute. I think that's genius. And it became flimpy. So it's very cool. But it's so instead of a submarine, they went with a big thing. That's there. right. Not, it's not not a submarine, water not below the below the ocean. It's yes. up in the sky. That's right. Yes. Interesting. So, so blimpy. Yeah. So Warby Parker is on the southeast corner of Sixth and Wash. There it is. What was there before Warby Parker? Oh, it was it's Greek to me. <laughs> <laughs> It's Greek it's to me. me. And then the next question, of course, what was there for many years? The Castle Point Restaurant. Oh. Wow. Nine. What would you get for a dollar forty nine? Yeah, yeah, you know what? I could probably tell you, but not right now. But yeah, I could. <laughs> I, I might be able to work on that. Oh, and 98.7 Kiss is also being uh, promoted on the side there. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, man, the, the metallic mansard roof, the stone work. Um, yeah, Castle Point Restaurant. So what was in the Soul Cycle building, the Soul Cycle Bank building before Soul Cycle? It was the Hoboken Reporter, the Hudson Reporter. The Hudson Reporter. Yeah. Ah, uh, the, the, the Robungi question. What was the name of the Mexican place that was in that location? It was Burritoville. I know. I know. So you said New York, all I had was Benny's, but I was like, I don't oh, know. Benny's Burritos, yeah, yeah. Not burrito, East, East, what was it? Um, Locos, Dos Locos or something? Uh, yeah, it's another. San, San Loco. Um, yeah, but no. Can you and the hot dog place? There, there was actually in that location a Nathan's famous. I know, I know. It's true. Nathan. It did not last very long. <laughs> <laughs> the Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. Yeah. What was there before? Before it was the Mad Hatter. One Republic. With the funny spelling. With the funny spelling. That's yep. right. That's why I said oh. things in my brain. Yeah. And what national fast food chain had a branch there long ago? Check out this photo. It's really obscure. <laughs> Look all the way over on the right. It's a, <laughs> it's a Burger King. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Photo we have in the archives of when it was a Burger King, that little sign. <laughs> and then it's the, bur the Burger King. There. And they even had like a, a playland in there too. They had like a, a they had like a little a little like a, like you know McDonald's land like the McDonald's land that McDonald's had. They had a little uh, playground inside there. And then Burger King closed, and it became a place called Cella Luna. BCB Bank, Eleventh and Wash. What was there beforehand? Well, there was the Hoboken Wine House, which was a you know uh, short short lived, but for many years, the Price King. <laughs> it was a liquor store. It was a liquor store there for a really long time. What's next? Oh, our last question. So, Mamoon's Falafel, three o one, no, three hundred Washington Third and Wash, in the rebuilt building after it was burnt down and <laughs> Washington. <laughs> Thank you, Google Street View. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that is the Washington Street game. <laughs> There's all the answers. It was supposed to be an animated, you know, by paragraph thing, but there they all are. How did everybody do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't about it. Uh, it was um, the, uh, there was a building in between the Burger King and the city paint, Paul. Uh, the, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was a whole bunch of fun. So, oh. right. So, that's is that's the Washington Street game, and I really, really, I, I, you know, play it all the time. And being the collect, being the collections manager at at uh, <laughs> the museum, I get to play it a real lot. We've we've got old old uh, <clears throat> phone books and and city directories, and a lot of times we get reference requests uh, for businesses or people, so we get to do a lot of. Uh, I get to do a lot of research into that. As a reminder, um, you can, of course, text spring. Four, four, three, two. Hey, guess what, folks? I'm back. Two. Yeah, Hello. Uh, Lisa's back. So I'm back just to announce that we have one more donation from someone named Alyssa Copeland. So oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Jer Jerry Meyer asks, what is denial arts now? It is, it is, unfortunately, the sign has been fixed. And it is dental arts, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> sad, sad but true. But uh, I think Doctor Doctor has moved on. So it, you know that was a that was a great little, little great moment there when when the the T in in dental was was uh, broken and uh, it looked like denial arts and then Mark Doctor was the dentist that was in there. So <laughs> and didn't wasn't his license plate also Doctor Doctor? I believe it was. That's kind of groovy sports car Corvette yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that, that that is our trivia night for the night. Um, and really, you know, I hope you guys had fun. We did. We did. Yay. Uh, great hang out. You know, one, one of the locations, Lois, I was curious about, though, wasn't there something about a club at one of the locations that... that uh... Oh, it's true. I had an answer. Um, I did have an answer when you said what used to be there. And right. I said... Isn't that isn't that the place that where the turtle club used to be? <laughs> but I guess I was wrong. I guess the turtle uh, club isn't there. Isn't the turtle club. The turtle club was maybe somewhere else. 
And thank you for reminding me. <laughs> if I had hauled this little buddy all the way the, the poor guy, like he's been in the bucket for like four hours. I'd forgotten to, to give him his screen time. That's right. <laughs> Because you know, one of the great, great, uh, uh, one of the great clubs in in Hoboken back, back, back in the day was, uh, uh, <laughs> the was this, uh, where the guy they would they were basically like, what was it? The Stevens family was complaining that the turtles in the marshes were eating their chickens. Oh, so let's form a turtle club and have turtles. <laughs> let's eat those turtles. If those Ooh. turtles are going to eat my chickens, I'm going to yeah. eat those turtles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's and that was it. Um, so and before the turtle club was the turtle club. Was it the liquid lounge or was there something in between? Black Hawk, Goldhawk, Goldhawk, of course. Liquid lounge. See, we're not playing the Washington Street game. <laughs> that's we're okay. We can the, talk yeah. about Park Avenue too. That's all right. All right. <laughs> all right. That's right. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> but the tur the turtle club um, ended up moving from Hoboken into like Northern Manhattan and then to Yonkers. Like, like part of my, my adventures in research, you know, do, about the turtle home, that that's what, what I discovered. Um, uh, the, the disco was, uh, the, we've got a, some comments about the disco uh, club that was down on the, the 200 block of Washington Street, Rosebuds. I remember being in the in the in the Dunkin' Donuts and and watching the the scene at uh, Rosebuds um, in the in the early '80s. Uh, now, I mean, it got broken up. Now it's like the South Street ramen place, uh, and uh, it used to be part of it was Bahama Mamas. And um, there's oh, Bahama the, Mama. Yeah, I remember Bahama Mama. Oh, they had yeah. reputation for getting rough crowds, right? Rough stuff. Yeah. And, mama, and, and, mama, you gotta be tough to go there. Yeah, we. I, I went in there once with one of my niece or nephew's twenty uh, first birthday. We like did a little twenty first birthday pub crawl, and it was like, yeah, no, we need to leave here now. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> it was it was a little too rough. It was you know, <laughs> it was like this isn't this um, this isn't what I'm looking for, you know. <laughs> well, not for somebody's the first legal drink. Right, that's right. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but that was yeah, it was. Um, there was a ANS Comics was one of the storefronts that used to be Rosebuds, and uh, but um, yeah, so see there I'm getting a lot of pushback on the Burger King location, but you know. Well, that's what this is for. That's the chat. What did you like? What we want to do this again? We want to do it again. How do we do it different? What do you like? What 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 could be you know? What what was what succeeded and what. What do you want to see more of? Yeah, yeah so, true. You know, because you know we've got uh, we've got a lot of there's a lot of trivia. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you could a, do a whole Sinatra. You could do you could just do Sinatra. There's you know this, anyway. There's a lot of trivia on and all the topics. Is, and and you know we 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 booked an hour and a half for this, but you know we and we we didn't quite get there. We're almost close enough, um, but uh, you know we can make a shorter one. We could just do an hour. We could do forty-five minutes. I think Bob and I are going to do forty-five minutes on the collections on on Tuesday. So this this was kind of a special premiere. Like, oh, uh, Rand's getting out the camera and sitting in the middle of the museum. Let's make it in an hour and a half, <laughs> kind of a thing. You know. <laughs> and we're but, in a quarantine pandemic, and you know, that's let's right. Let's relax and uh, and let it breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Um, yeah, so you know, we could definitely, if you want to, uh, send us some emails, and uh, I don't know, you can comment comment on the videos, or in, I guess so we'll we'll probably leave the chat available to the masses uh, once we once we are no longer live, um, we can you know take commentary, uh, but yeah, we should we should definitely do this again. It's it's fun. You know, so. <laughs> and uh, what else? Anything else going on? What's yeah? What's what? Do you want to say anything that's coming up? What's happening behind you? Postcards are still that's going right. strong, no, no, gorgeous, right. yep. fabulous. So, so we've got um, just as far as the live, the live art class. We've got 
so as I mentioned, there's um, a collections event with 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 uh, Bob Foster and, and me and Bob Foster on Tuesday, where we're going to pick out like I don't know ten items and just kind of talk about them and have the chat room open, and that you know just talk about fun items that we have in the collection, and uh, and then on Saturday, Bill Curran is going to be having a, a class. Of, uh, for painting still lifes. So that that should be that's a that's a special, ah. like register and sign in to Zoom class as opposed to this crazy free for all that we're involved in on YouTube <laughs> Live right now. <laughs> no, but uh, check check out you know our newsletter and um, uh, our website. We have links to all these things. What else is coming up? Oh, I'm, you know, if you go to the YouTube channel where you are now, any as uh, I acknowledge that, but uh, I did record two Hoboken Hollywood episodes um, early on in the pandemic from my apartment, and uh, I I I think I'm going to do one live just to have the the chat room available and kind of like do the donation thing again because we are still trying to raise money for our our spring goal. Uh, you know. <laughs> Somebody gave me a spring a slinky as a gift. So you know right Bill? <laughs> Bill gave me a present. It's a slinky, but um, for the spring goal I figured I'd I'd bring it and uh, you know you text uh, Spring gold of four four three two one and uh, help us out. We can we could use some help. Oh, Lisa's got an update. What's happening? What's happening on the? Hey, I'm back. <laughs> so I just wanted to announce that we got two more donations. One is anonymous, and uh -huh. the other is from Alex Johnson. Thank oh. you so much for your donation. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> we really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, there's the, I, so I'm, uh, the next Hoboken Hollywood. I'm going to do. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the heck out of doing um, the Stoolie with Jackie Mason because I just thought that was such a weird, funny movie. Um, and just to see Jackie Mason kind of doing this Paul Giamatti thing that I had no idea he'd even tried to do. Um, but. Uh, we're going to. Um, I think the the Hoboken Hollywood that I'm I'm whipping up in my mind is um, just a clip show, you know. So I'm going to try to just as I as like our, our our promotion mentioned, like Albert Finney tap dancing in in Arthur's Steakhouse, not Matthew Modine in the train station. Uh, what's her name? Um, Jenna Rollins in the Hotel Victor. Uh, there's a there's a whole you know, Amy Irving in in various places. She's in two Hoboken movies, actually. She's in a bookstore in... Uh, in Crossing the Lansing. Yes. But she's also in Voices, where she plays the dancer who is hard of hearing. Oh, my. Yes. And um, what else? Uh, oh, man, there's so many. I, just, I really... I really Jennifer, enjoy Aniston. Jennifer Aniston at the Elks Club. At the Elks Club. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I don't remember the the gentleman in that particular rom com. Rom that would be rom -com. Jay Moore. Oh, I Jay really? Moore, I think really. I I'm it's shocked. The comic, that's not right? what I expected. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I was but, thinking yeah. a brunette guy. I remember when when Lisa and I got married. We got married at the Elks Club, and um, the. Uh, Somebody was like, "Oh my God! I just, you know, I saw that that Elks Club in a movie with Jennifer Aniston." Like, the most exciting thing. <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll, there's a whole book in Hollywood coming up. So, you know, if we're if we're, you know, since we are enjoying this, and you know, I think we will do a shorter one, um, and. Uh, do you know? I'm, I imagine the collections. Every object tells a story. Will be fun, and Bill's painting will be fun, and you know, Hoboken Hollywood will be, will be fun. So we'll just try to, we'll just try to, uh, we'll just try to keep going. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not Goodfellows. It's um, Paul Paul mentions Goodfellows at the Elysian. What is the uh, sleepers? Sleepers. 
That's right. See, <laughs> see Kevin Bacon get murdered at the Elysian. At the oh, Elysian. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, they're walking around in the in, in Hell's Kitchen and they go into Mikhail's bar and what? It's the Elysian. Whoa, whoa, magic of cinema. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. Well, I think that's I, I I'm I'm thank you so much for your donations tonight. We really appreciate it. Um we love the museum. We're we're uh we've got a lot going on here and it's really fun. Uh, if you come by the come by the passageway outside, we've got um, masks that have been submitted for the mask art uh, contest. Every every mask a plank canvas is the is the uh, contest that we had. It was a it's closed now, but we've put a bunch of the masks up for display, and we have a mask art table out front, and um, so you can. Um, Put art on on your own on masks, uh, and we we will will probably uh, have another uh, mask art contest. Open it up. This one was specifically for Hoboken um, contestants. We'll probably open up to the county. Sometimes Bob is like, "Oh, I have a lot of interest in the masks, so we might just open it up to the like the whole country or the world to like art mask art." Um, we really like painting and drawing on the art, not like big, you know constructions um, on the masks but um, and there's a there's like a memory project out there too we've got uh, people sending uh, postcards to their to their future selves and um, writing their experience um, with, during the pandemic and then attaching it to a wall uh, a grid you know so it, it's kind of a, a way to kind of have a memory project we've got um, our collecting Hoboken project online at ch.hobokenmuseum.org it, uh, <clears throat> it's all about trying to uh, collecting our stories. We have an oral history project, uh, the art, the face mask art project. Um, if you go to the website at ch.hobokenmuseum.org, there's a form that you can fill out if you're interested in sharing your your um, your story for the during the pandemic. That that would be great. We're we're really into it. We want to be able to build a really great archive of, of Hoboken's stories during this weird time. Um, and uh, so, you know, join us and become a member, donate, uh, volunteer, do all those wonderful things. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the bell. Lois, you had like a, a subscription weirdness with the YouTube channel, right? Like you did. You I did, I had subscribed, but I, I neglected to turn on notifications. I think that's so I would subscribe, but I was not getting any alerts that stuff was happening. Yeah, so, so that's what I learned. Do that. So that's, that's <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the thing to do. So thanks again, folks. I know we've been kind of dragging it on. I like hearing myself talk. I'll blow the Vuvuzela one more time. Which is orange. It's orange. Frank Sinatra's favorite color. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>